Hey guys, welcome back to uh, our LED cube project. This is going to be part two. This will be the software um, that we're going to be using. Um, here's our layout of our schematic here. Got our pick microcontroller, got our ship registers, and our uh, pull ups for the anodes and our power supply and whatnot. We're going to go ahead and get started. For this instance, we're not going to code these switches. I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm a, think you guys probably figure out how to do that. I just have those in there for, like I said in the past video, I may be uh, making boards um, to go along with this just because uh, this is kind of a fascinating project. So I'm going to, I may go ahead and it came out so nice. I think I may go ahead and put it on boards and, <clears throat> you know, make it fully legitimate. Anyway, um, we're going to be going ahead and uh, looking at the software now. Um, the compiler I picked for this for right now it was the CCSC compiler. Um, I think I may be ending up switching that out to the uh, high tech C compiler, uh, just because it it's got a little more power to it and I can I can do a little more with it than the CCSC one. Um, the CCSC one is fine. It's just that I think the timing to get everything smooth. Um, really requires uh, some pretty in-depth stuff and uh, to be quite honest I, I didn't really delve that deep into the CCSC compiler to figure out how to really configure you know just every single little register and everything whereas the high tech C compiler um, I, I'm way more familiar with uh, getting really down to the nitty-gritty with it. Um, the CCSC one is a fine compiler. I'm sure it can do everything that the other one can. It's just I'm more used to the ANSI standard uh, way of doing things and CCSC is not an ANSI standard um, compiler. And so it's it's naming conventions and the way that it, it um, the kind of mechanics of it are different than what I'm used to. So um, I may end up doing this with the, with the high tech C compiler. I don't think the code's going to be that big. So um, I might be able to do it with a freeware version. And that's kudos to you guys because those of you that don't have the CCS compiler or don't want to spend the money to buy that one, um, because I don't think that, I don't believe they have free demos. They may have come out with one, but I don't think they do. Um, the high tech C compiler, however, you can download for free and you can compile up to, I can't remember how many how many words of code you can compile, but it's it's not a whole lot, but it's enough that you might be able to do this little project um, fairly simply. So without further ado, let's hit up the good old MPLAB X. Um, starting to like this uh, interface a lot better. You know, they've got more uh, mechanics and stuff with it, and some more updates. They've updated it recently and stuff, and it's kind of made it a little better. Um, this was another reason um, with the CCSC compiler is these little squiggles right here and all these little exclamation marks that you see. That's because it's not recognizing these. Uh, the 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 IDE isn't. And what it is is it's because it's it's non ANSI standard stuff. So like this int 16 and stuff like that. Um, they're not. Uh, yeah. And so it doesn't it doesn't recognize them as standard. So it's going to question it and ask you what's going on. Anyway. <clears throat> okay, we're going to try to run through this fairly quick. Um, it's kind of, it's a little complicated, but we're going to try to run through it um, fairly quickly. I've got basically our good old serial to parallel um, deal. I'm not going to go through this. Um, however, I will highlight the changes that I'm going to make uh, that I've made because it is different from the one I believe that we did in the shift registers portion because I think we only did 8-bit. We didn't do 16-bit. We didn't do two registers worth of stuff. So what you're going to have to change is I think these were 8-bit integers. These were in 8s. You want them to be 8 in 16s here and here. You also want to change this number. This was an 8. Um, it was basically only rolling through 8 deals because obviously there was only 8 bits. So you need to change this to 16 as well as the, the, the mask strip off. The, the number you're using to strip, um, strip uh, the numbers off, you want to change that from 80 to 8,000 uh, hexadecimal because that will stretch it out. The 80 only did, uh, uh, in fact, in fact, I could probably just show you. Um, that's one thing I do like about Windows 7 is I like the, the, the calculator um, because you have binary down here. If I do 80, as you can see, I get, I get uh, the 8. I get 8 bits. There's 4 and 4. I get 8 bits, you know, mask. So I want 16, though. I want it clear out here. I want the one all the way to the 15th slot over here. So if I do 8,000, see, that brings it all the way out here. I get all 16 uh, I get mask bits to mask with. So that's the difference. <clears throat> so you want that to be 8,000, this to be 16, these both to be 16-bit integers, and you should be good to go. And that takes care of that one. Highlight code folding, I think it's neat. Anyway, I have uh, 
another function that employs this fun that employs the serial to parallel function. I call it light out again 16 bit integer. What it's doing is it's taking in uh, this number that you type into the function and it does a, basically a switch uh, switch case on it and what it's going to do is depending on whether it's a 0 through 16 it's going to give it's going to pass um, the binary number to uh, to the to the serial to parallel to push out the shift register. Now, the thing that makes this different, you see notice that this is all ones, and it makes you wonder. You think, wait a minute, that means everything's on. Well, no, no, no. Remember, we're doing basically inverted logic. We're providing grounds. We're not providing um, a positive. We're not providing five volts to this thing. We're providing ground, right? Because we're on the cathode of the diode. We're not on the anode. The anode is provided by the P channels, and that's that will be illustrated later on down through here. But that's provided by P channels, by the P channel MOSFETs is the anodes. The cathodes is what the the ship registers are applying. So five volts means that it's off. Zero volts means that it's on. So it's inverted logic. One is off zero is on. So, to turn everything off, um, for a case of zero, if we don't want any LEDs on, when zero of the 16 LEDs are on, then we put all ones to the shift register. And then, as usual, if you want one, then the first zero, or the first uh, digit is going to be zero. And then the next one, the next one is zero. And then third, fourth, and so on and so forth. As you can see, it goes at an angle. Um, so on and so forth, till the 16th one is a zero. Okay? So that's how that works. So a zero turns it on, not a one. A zero turns it on. So that's where that goes. And then there's there's all 16 cases for it, so that uh, so that you can do that. And so that's what the light out, or basically light output um, function is for. Now on to our main function. Now set tris b. We want to set our tri-state registers all output. So zero. The we're not inputting anything. Now if you employ those switches. I think those switches are on the B, um, B6 and B5, so you'll probably have to change up that uh, that number to, you know, make those others, the B5 and 6 or whatever that was, uh, 5 and 6, yeah, make those inputs, you know. So, but for right now, all outputs. Like I said, I'm not going to do the switches for this uh, little demonstration. So we'll just do so we'll just do that. So the next one is going to be uh, our ADC ports. Uh, because of them being the B0, whatever, if you look in the data sheet of this guy, um, these also dual as analog ports. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that I think by default they're set as analog ports. So they won't work unless you set them up as digital ports. So what you use is in the CCSC compiler, you use the setup ADC ports and uh, you put in no analogs and that will change out all all ports that come into the ADC. It will switch them all so some of the A some of the port A stuff and some of the port B stuff you know that share that are shared for the ADC those will all be digital ports now so that guarantees that you have digital ports. Um, I think it's the AD con register is what this configures so if you're in high tech C it's the AD con register so um, keep that in mind. First thing I do is we're going to basically initialize everything. We've got serial to parallel and we got all F's, which means all ones. So we turn everything off. Um, we've got pin C0, C1, C2, and C3, which if you remember, C0, C1, C2, and C3 are our row control, basically the P channel FETs. We're going to turn all of those high. It's inverted logic. P channels, remember, a high turns them off. So same thing with uh, same thing with those P channels. So we output a high on all those pins, and that turns off all the deals. Now you could take and go up here, kind of like I've done for the shift register. You could take this uh, C0, C1, C2, and C3, and make pound defines for them. Call it row one, row two, row three, row four, just for simplicity of code. Just so you know. Um, now what I've done here is I've initialized a couple variables because we're going to use nested loops. So we're going to have a loop that will move the rows, and then another loop, the I loop, will move rows, the J loop will move uh, LEDs. And then I've created a sequence, okay? And it's a 13-step sequence, and what it does is it basically will run, um, will run around, it basically runs circles, is what it does. So around the outside. So the first one will be 1, 2, 3, 4, which will be the 
the first succession of LEDs, and then 8, 12, 16, 8, 12, 16, 15, we'll go around, we'll go around the next side, and then uh, 14, 13, 9, 5, 1, it'll go around the rest of the side. So basically it's going to go around a circle, it's going to go around the edges of the, of the LED, it's going to basically draw a box, you know, so, um, if you have it, um, if you have your, your deal, you're going to have, you know, it's going to basically draw a box. So what's going to do? This is the one, and then you got, you know, two, three, four, five, and I went like this, one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, sorry, one, two, three, four, and then I went, uh, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 11, 12, I didn't, I didn't serpentine when I, in my wiring method, um, I just went right down the rows. So you do it however you want to, that's just in your wiring, but that's what I did. Um, so essentially, so you've got your square, you got your LEDs, one, two, three, four. I did that and then I went four, or five, six, seven, eight, and then 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then 16. So, yeah, this one was 1, this one was 2, this one was 3, this one was 4. Doing this with my mouse is crazy. 5, and then 6, 7, and so on and so forth until you go around. So that's where I'm getting that, you know, see there's 8. So that's where I'm getting that as I'm going like this. That's what I'm doing with my code. Okay, so we're traversing this direction, okay? So you've got one, three, or four, and then eight, and then this will be eight, and then it'll be nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So as you can see, eight, twelve, sixteen, eight, twelve, sixteen, and then we go around this way, and that's what I'm doing. And so that's the sequence that's gonna run in, okay? So we're gonna couple this array with our white out deal to basically produce that sequence. I'll show you later on. So essentially <coughs> we're going to we're going to take and spit out um, all ones. We're going to delay a few microseconds and then we're going to spit out all ones on the other on the other guy. Um, and this is inside our for loop is what this is for. We're going to initialize every time we um, make a complete pass. Basically we go around the circle on the top layer, go around the next one, the next one, the next one, we get to the bottom, and then when we cycle back to the top is this for loop. This is our infinite while loop, or, or just our normal control loop. So every time we cycle back and we start the whole process over, we're going to clear everything out just to make sure there's no uh, stray LEDs that got left on or something. We're going to clear it all out again. Okay. And then we begin. We've got our first for loop. It's from 0 to 4 because we got four rows. We have four tiers. So 0 to 4, and that's incrementing i. So then we check to see is i 0, is it 1, is it 2, is it 3, and then we increment as well. So output low on the first row. I'm calling the first row connected to C0. So row 1 is low, and then the rest are high. So that turns it on. Remember, inverse logic. And then if you're in the second tier, you're in number one, you're in the second tier, then the second one is low, the rest are high, and so on and so forth. High, high, low, low, okay. And then there's an else that says everything's off, is all I did for that. Then within this loop, <coughs> now basically once you've chosen which, uh, depending on where you are in this loop, once you've chosen, let's say like for the first go around, you'll choose this one, you'll put out a low, so you'll, you'll power up the bottom rail, and then it'll skip out of this because uh, it's done. And then it'll go to this for loop. Now this for loop now takes and goes and does the sequence that uh, and uh, actually I've been I just noticed this I I was playing around with this code and this actually needs to be from 1 to 16 not 1 to 17 <laughs> or 0 to 17. <coughs> Sorry about that. It just caught me weird. Okay, now I was like I said, I was playing with this code a little bit ago. So anyway, so one to sixteen is where this needs to go because we're picking our from the first LED to the sixteenth LED. So one to sixteen is how this one's going to go. So basically, we've chosen which row we're at. Now we're going to do our sequence. So we're going to say light out, and then our sequence array, and then we're going to say we're going to increment that array by j. See, so first time around, 
we'll turn on LED 1. Next time around, LED 2. J will be 2, so we'll turn on LED 2. And then J will be 3, we'll turn on LED 3, and then 4, and then we'll turn on 8, and then 12, and then 16. So that's basically our index marker is this J, um, the J cursor. So anyway, that's how that's going to work. So we're saying light out, and then we choose which number in that sequence we're on by using the control variable J. And then we're going to delay, oh, 30 milliseconds. That way it whips around pretty quick. So we're going to delay 30 milliseconds in between each uh, LED transition. And that should make it whip around there pretty cool and make it look really neat. So anyway, that's basically it. And see, then next time it rolls around, this loop will roll around because this one's going to sit here and churn 16 times. And then it'll exit this loop and come back to this loop. Well, once it comes back to this one, it's going to increment i, or i will be incremented, so it'll be number one now. So it'll come down, skip the zero th phase, come to one, turn everything else off, but the second row, now we're in the second row, and then it'll sit here and churn through uh, 16 iterations, so it goes through all the, all, the, uh, all the sequences that are there for that one, and then goes back up and then it'll start over again. It'll go around and around and it'll just keep doing this till it gets through all the levels. So that's essentially what uh, what we got going on. So anyway, so as usual, now that I've changed that, as usual, I'm going to go ahead and build. We should get everything build successful. All right, zero error, zero warnings. Everything's great. Everybody's happy. Uh, do, 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 do. So that means we're good to go. Um, and like I said, I've got my ICD hooked up to this. So I, in fact, I'll show you how that works. I'm just going to go ahead and hit program. Now I've got my ICD hooked up. Um, I can just hit hit program and it should bring it up. There it is, ICD3. It's going to say connecting to MenP Lab. It's seen it. It got the revision number. Um, it goes along. It says programming and then program verify complete. And actually, I'll show you this because I'll demo it. But I can I'm looking behind me on my table and I can see it uh, running around in circles and it's doing its thing. So that's good enough confirmation to me that this code does work. So as usual, the the video will be coming. Uh, the next video will be coming uh, shortly after this one about the demo because I've already got it put together. I've been so excited to show you guys this stuff. That's what I've been working on all, all week and whatnot. And so um, I'll have the other video coming out for you guys too. And so so shortly, so you can actually see this code in action, see it working. Like I said, the uh, the I may end up doing this differently. We may do it with uh, timers. You can check out my video on timers. I would probably do it with a timer because a timer has more accurate um, timing and you can do it with uh, interrupts so it'll be an interrupt driven program so you'll use the ISR the interrupt service routine and things like that instead of just delaying 30 milliseconds because you've got all of this clock cycling and stuff like that so you may if you want it to be pretty smooth uh, there, there is a little bit of skippiness to it maybe you now I don't know not a lot I don't know it might be something to try see if you may it may improve if you put that in because I mean we're running at 8 megahertz so we're running pretty quick you know um, I, I cranked this chip up as fast as it would go internally you can always stick an external oscillator on this guy and crank him up to I don't know maybe 32 megahertz or something like that you know and see if that might you know make uh, things different I don't know it's just something to play with and as I play with it I may post more videos and uh, show you guys other neat and cool little sequences and and speeds and ways of programming maybe that um, may make things better um, or just make it different so as always um, keep on coding keep on putting stuff together because that's what it's about it's about the fun and the, the love of it all and just making really nifty stuff so thanks again guys for watching uh, please click subscribe and everything else and keep a lookout for that uh, demo video it's gonna be coming right after this one thanks guys